So number nine then from paper two of the 2021 Higher Maths resource paper, the optimization question, the one with the two parts in it. In the first part, you have to derive the equation you're going to optimize. And in the second part, you have to find the value that in fact optimizes it. So it says you've got a cylindrical tin and there's the net at the side. If you were to cut it around the top and the bottom and fold it all out flat, that's the shape you would get. So that's the surface area. It says, show that the surface area is given by this expression, along with the additional information that the volume of it is 450 centimetres cubed. Well, quite often what happens here is you just go into part B and you forget about part A because you don't like doing this stuff because you've got to think a wee bit, haven't you? It's not just a routine that you go through. But it's fairly straightforward. It's, it's things that you know. It's only like sort of second year stuff. What does it say? It wants the surface area. So what is that surface area made of? No, it's actually a function of two variables here, so I'll just call it A. Well, it's made up of two circles and a rectangle. So it's made up of, if I spell it out, it's made up of the top, it's made up of the bottom, and it's made up of the up of the curved, what can I call it, even though it's flat there, the curved side. Those are the three parts. Circle, circle, rectangle. So what would their areas be? Well, the top's a circle of radius r, so that's pi r squared. The bottom's an identical, a congruent circle, pi r squared. And the curved side is going to be the circumference times the height. So the circumference, you can either call it pi d, I'm going to call it 2 pi r times the height. So I'll just tidy that up. So that's 2 lots of pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. Now, that's the area in terms of r and h. Well, that gets a mark. Except that's no use for differentiating because you've got two variables and you don't, how to, don't know how to deal with that. You have to get it down to just one variable. You need rid of this h. The way you get rid of that h is you need to find some connection between r and h. There has to be another bit of information somewhere, and there it is, the volume. So what you can see now is this. That volume, I know what the volume is given by. The volume of a cylinder is area base times height is pi r squared h, and it tells me it's 450. So that means I can rearrange that to read h equals 450 over pi r squared. So now you can substitute that in there, just shift you over a bit. So if I just call that, no, I'll just call it, I'll just call it A. So if you were to substitute that in, substitute it in A, you'll have this. A, now it's just going to be a function of 1, so I can say A of r will be 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r, and now pop in h, 450 over pi r squared. So you've got 2 pi r squared plus the 2 and the pi and one of the r's, the, sorry, the 2 doesn't go, the pi and the r and one of the r's goes, so that leaves 2 times the top, which is 900, and a single r underneath. Now, of course, there was a mark for getting this expression here that was going to remove h, and then there was the mark for putting it in to arrive at the expression you wanted. And then part b, determine the radius that will minimise the surface area. So I want to differentiate it. So I'll just rewrite this in a form suitable for differentiation. That term's fine, but I'll put that r up on top, so 900 r to the negative 1. And in fact, doing that is worth a mark, getting into suitable form. Now I'm going to differentiate it, multiply by the power, that's 4, take 1 off the power, that's r. Multiply by the power, that's minus 1 times it, take 1 off the power, negative 2. That's worth a mark. Now I'm going to see if there's a stationary value, that means that a dashed r should equal 0. So I'm looking for 4 pi r minus, I'll rewrite this as 900 over r squared equal to 0. Doing that is worth a mark. Getting thrown down here. 
Right, let's get rid of that fraction. Multiply everything by r. That's fair enough. I'm meant to write 4 pi. 4 pi r cubed minus 900 equals 0. Then we've got to solve that. Just rearrange that in one go. Take the 900 over and... Oh, 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 I think we'll do that. So r cubed is going to be 900 over 4 pi. That's a bit of a mess there. Which means, finally, r is going to be the cube root. The cube root of, and if I divide that into it, that's going to be 225 upon pi for a mark. But now there's still two marks left. That's essentially it, but you have to demonstrate that that gives a minimum. Well, that's going to be a wee bit of a nuisance, this particular number here, because the two ways of doing that would be, one, to consider a table which shows the values before and after that derivative is equal to zero. There's another better way in this case, though. So the first way would be, so I'll make up this little table. I've got my value of r, which I'm going to put down as the cube root of 225 upon pi. And I'm going to have the value of the derivative. I know that's zero there. Now I'm going to choose something just above it and just below it. Some nice number. But that means I need to know what that is to find that number, to put it into this formula here. See, that's the point at which, how much do they actually check? Could you just say, oh, that must be plus and that must be minus? Without actually giving the values, would that be just cheating too much? Popping that in and then, then that saying that means that r equal to whatever, 225 upon pi, gives minimum area. So we'll give you a mark for your kitty on table. And then the result from that table stating it is a minimum. Because they're actually giving you two marks for that. Or will you just be honest and actually spend all the time finding the value of that? Which is 4.15. Four point one five three, I say, and then pretend you've put in something like you could even just say one, but let's say pretend you've put in four and five. So that's a bit of work, but then you'd actually have to put four and five into this expression here to see what they come to. So if you're going to be completely honest, then you'd have to say, well, that turns out to be minus five point nine eight, and that one, oof, turns out to be. Positive 26.83. There. It takes an awful lot of time. It took too longer to do that arithmetic than it did to do just virtually the whole question there. That's the problem when you've got one like this. But there's a way around that. Instead of doing that, you can use... It's not really mentioned that often. And in a case like this, it's really useful. You could use the second derivative. Because that might save an awful lot of arithmetic. Now, the second derivative just means you differentiate this again. But there's something very handy happens when you do that. I know it's going to be a bit crushed. So I'll put a wee line here. You could have said this. Well, I found the first derivative. What's the second derivative? Well, that'll be 4 pi. Well, that's handy because that's fixed. Differentiating this, multiply by the power. That's a plus. That's it done. That tells you the answer straight away. This answer always has to be more than 4 pi. It always has to be positive. I'll carry on anyway. Multiply by the power, so that'll be 800. 1800, I mean. 1800 r to the negative 3 over r cubed, in other words. Now, it doesn't matter what r is. In this case, the second derivative is greater than 0 for all r greater than 0. So it doesn't matter what you put in. It's always greater than 0 which means that any value of r, so in this case specifically, r equals whatever, 225 upon pi, gives a minimum area. But then again, if you didn't realise that that was the case, if you didn't realise that that was always going to be greater than zero, irrespective of what r was, so you didn't make that statement, you'd actually have to evaluate it. It wouldn't be so bad evaluating that, you wouldn't need a calculator, because you're cubing this, so it's all just going to be numbers that should hopefully cancel out with each other and add up nice and neatly. Put it up here. 
yeah, just to keep everything on the, on the one space afterwards. So that means you're wanting to evaluate the value of the second derivative at the cube root of 225 upon pi. And you've got that the second derivative is 4 pi plus 1800 over r cubed. So that means I'm going to be putting in, since I put that there, the cube of this, which will just reconstruct the 225 over pi, so that pi can pop to the top. And that's nice and handy, you've already done that calculation. When you did that here, 900 divided by 4 was 225. So there's four 225s in, this, in 900, so it must be 8 there. So that means you've got 4 and 8 is 12 lots of pi altogether, which is, of course, greater than 0. Then you make the statement, that means that the second derivative is greater than zero, so that happens when you've got a minimum. Because what the second derivative does is it tells you how fast the gradient's changing. It's the rate of change of the gradient. And if the, the rate of change of the gradient is greater than zero, it means it's increasing. So if it was negative, it's becoming less negative. And if it's positive, it's becoming more positive. So it curves, it's curving up, it's concave upwards. It's a minimum.